Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is John Elfie. Uh, thank you for joining me today. I'm an applications engineer here at Heat Pipe Technology. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar or aren't aware, this webinar is going to focus on Select Plus uh, training and more specifically our newly added HRMV and DHVB products. So these products have actually been around for quite some time. The only difference is previously, if anyone had any requests for uh, drawings or selections of submittals, everything would have to be done in-house at HPT by an applications engineer. So sometimes it would take a little bit of time to kind of, kind of go through that process and be able to send documents out. Now that this, these two products are available in Select Plus, uh, you can easily get some middles, um, whatever else is needed uh, at that time in real time. So it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty convenient, pretty big change for us. We're hoping this sort of opens up uh, these products to, uh, to everyone out there. So this is a little summary of what I'm going to be uh, covering over this webinar. Uh, first off, I'll talk about crowd product description and differences or similarities between the vertical two products that we have. Uh, it's not going to be too extensive. That can actually be a webinar in itself, is getting into these products and applications and whatnot. So if anyone does need any more information, we do have tons of documents on these products that are available online, again, at heatpipe.com or you can reach out to us and we'll provide whatever information you need. Next thing I'll go through some selection examples. I'll actually be doing three examples. Then I'll show you economic analysis. It's very similar to our other products that we have available at Select Plus right now, or in Select Plus. I just wanna show you guys how to kind of go through that process and things to keep an eye on when you're doing an economic analysis. And if time permits, I'll wrap it up with some tips and shortcuts. I'm hoping to keep, keep the actual webinar to 45 minutes. And again, uh, take 10 minutes to answer any questions. All right, so with that being said, HRV and DHPB products. So when it comes to our vertical tube uh, line that we offer, we're really dealing with two types of products, if you will. First off, it's energy recovery. This is what we call our split passive product line. And we denote it with as HRMV. And that acronym actually stands for Heat Recovery Module, and the V stands for Vertical Tubes. There's a little graphic here of what a system can look like. Uh, a couple of things that I want to point out. This system here is one section tall. So obviously, you just have one, one coil uh, or one module. You can stack these modules on top of each other, depending on your system arrangement or CFMs. Uh, another thing I want to point out is for every two rows, we combine uh, those two rows into one coil, and those two rows have a common vapor line, which this vapor line is actually located up top, and the liquid line or liquid header is lo located at the bottom. Another thing to point out is you do see some valves here. These are modulating valves that we do provide. Uh, we also provide a control box that houses, or actually a NEMA enclosure that houses uh, control boards, which controls these valves, you just need to send voltage in to that box and a signal to control those valves. So that's energy recovery. The other type of product that we offer is dehumidification, and we denote that with DHPV, and that stands for dehumidifier heat pipes. And again, the V stands for vertical tube. So the HRV and DHPV, those are two terms or acronyms you're going to see quite extensively in our documentation. Uh, either online or wherever we're trying to uh, show some information on these products. And the DHPV, this is a graphic here illustrating what it would look like. Basically, it's the same design as an HRMV, but instead of two separated airstreams, you've got obviously one supply airstream where you've got your prequel, a substream, you'd have your cooling coil in the middle, and then downstream is your reheat uh, heat pipe. Uh, one thing that I actually, just to go back a little bit, on the energy recovery side, I mentioned that we combine two rows per coil. So this system that you're looking at here, since we have three sets of, of headers, of vapor and liquid headers, this would be a six-row system that we're looking at. And for the DHPV, we're actually looking at a two-row system, since, since you're only seeing one set of headers. One very important thing to, to point out with uh, DHPVs and HRMVs is these are thermosiphon systems meaning that gravity has a big impact on A, performance, and B, the physical design of the coil. So with energy recovery, if you have an elevation offset between your supply and exhaust, 
depending on which is the lower airstream, that's going to dictate which season you're actually doing recovery, either optimizing recovery uh, or in some cases, depending on your offset, you might only be doing recovery in one season and not do any recovery in the off season. With the DHPVs or dehumidification, uh, if the reheat cool is actually elevated, you got to keep in mind that the pre cool coil in this sense is the evaporator coil, that's the warm side, and the reheat coil is the condenser side. So you always want to have that evaporator lower to improve performance uh, compared to the, uh, the condenser side. So if you can elevate this reheat, you will see that there is an improvement in, again, the performance and the physical design of the coil, which you will see here in a little bit in the next, next slide. All right, so when we talk about HRMV and the arrangement types, we really have three types of arrangements. The first is what you just saw on the previous slide. That's what we call the fixed offset arrangement. And again, that's where you have a, a permanent offset, depending on which is the lower airstream, that's going to, again, dictate what season you're doing recovery in. The next arrangement that we have, it's called the DSO, uh, which stands for Dynamic Seasonal Offset. That's for level arrangements, and that's where your supply and exhaust are in the same elevation. What we've done there is we've actually implemented partial phase dampers on the entering side of the supply and exhaust modules. And what those dampers are doing, they're actually closing and opening depending on what season you're at. And what we're effectively doing is lowering the evaporator uh, lower than the condenser side so that during summer and winter, you're optimizing performance. Again, opposed to the fixed offset where you're just optim optimizing performance for one season. And the third arrangement is our HRMV standard for level arrangements. Again, same as the DSO, but we're not optimizing for either season. All right, so these are some of the differences that you can see uh, with the physical design of the coils. So for the HRMV fixed offset, we can actually do a max fin height of 75 inches per section. And again, you can stack sections on top of each other. The DSO, we have a max uh, effective or open face height of 60 inches. And the HRMV level, we're limited to 30 inches of maximum height per section. So you can see here what an offset actually does in the improvement of the coil design. What this means is if you compare same size unit or CFMs uh, between a level and a fixed offset, you'll see that the fixed offset, you'll need a lot fewer sections, uh, which means a lot less piping, a lot less valves, less cost. When we talk about the max fin length per airstream, that's actually the same for all three arrangements. Uh, we're looking at 155 inches per airstream. Max separation, and we've got there, it says linear pipe length. That's actually just one way. So we're talking about the longest line that you have. If you add up all the, the linear um, uh, lengths, that's your max separation that we're talking about. So for fixed offset in the DSO, we're looking at 120 feet max separation. With the HRMV standard level arrangement, we're looking at only 60 feet. Again, this is due to uh, basically gravity and, and physics helping improve the, the design. Performance, there's a little asterisk next to the performance. Uh, this is based on a six row system at 500 feet per minute. With the HRMV fixed offset and the DSO, you're looking at up to 53% effectiveness. And for the HRMV standard level, you're looking at up to 37% effectiveness. Control types, we can either provide valves, as I mentioned previously, or you can use bypass dampers. Another thing to point out, which is pretty important, because these systems have vertical tubes, which means horizontal fins, a carryover can be an issue. Moisture can build up on those fins, and they can be pushed downstream. So we recommend extended drain pans or moisture eliminators. Now, for the fixed offset, you're really just worried about managing condensation on the lower airstream. But with the DSO level and the HRMV standard level, you want to make sure that you're uh, taking into consideration both supply and exhaust when it comes to condensation. So those are the three arrangements for HRMVs. One thing to mention is all these these products, the HRMVs, they all they all are uh, HR certified. We're actually the only manufacturer in the world with split passive systems where we can actually um, we do have HR certification. DHPV arrangements, a little, uh, basically same sort of limitations, but we only have two different arrangement types. 
One again is DHPV with a fixed offset. That's when you're elevating the reheat above the precool and a DHPV standard uh, level arrangement. Same sort of limitations apply. The max fin height for fixed offset is 75 inches compared to a level, which is 30 inches. Max fin length, a precool and reheat is 155 inches for both cases. And again, the max separation is 120 feet for the fixed offset and level arrangement 60 feet. I've never seen anything that uh, that great of a separation with the DHPVs or wraparounds. Uh, really, uh, you know, you might be looking at 10 to 12 feet of separation, but if you need it, it's there. And control type, we do offer uh, modulating valves. It's actually one of the bigger advantages for DHPVs if you compare it to our other controllable uh, wraparounds in Select Plus, which have level, uh, level tubes. Depending on the size of your system, you'll see that at a certain point, it might be more cost effective to use a DHPV compared to a, uh, a level controllable wraparound. And the reason why is at a certain point, you start getting to too many valves with the level wraparounds. As opposed to a DHPV, you have a lot fewer circuits, a lot fewer valves. Condensation management, you're really just worried about the pre-cool condensing, so you would want to uh, definitely have some kind of extended drain pan or moisture eliminator downstream of the pre-cool. So that's pretty much it as far as the arrangements and some of the descriptions or differences. Again, there is a ton of information online at heatpipe.com, or you can reach out to us and we'll provide you with whatever information you're looking for. So now we're going to get into Select Plus, and as I mentioned, I'm going to be doing three examples. So let me go ahead and open up Select Plus here. All right, so let me actually zoom in here. So I'm assuming that the majority of you listening right now, you do have some experience with Select Plus, so you do know how to set up a project, how to actually uh, start a selection, and simple things like that. If you don't have uh, or if you're not aware of how to do that, we do have tons of videos on YouTube. We have a channel. You can just search us. Uh, we have two to three minute long clips, which we basically uh, go through Select Plus and we do, as I mentioned, how to create a project and how to go through uh, selections for our products. The only thing we don't have is uh, uh, split uh, HRVs and DHPVs. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a project here quickly, title it HRV. HPV webinar. I'll select the pro uh, project type. And there you go. I've just created that new project. So now I'm going to get into the actual selection. And uh, right now I'm going to start off with our energy recovery, split passive. So I'll create a new line item and get into the selection. So the layout's still the same if you compare it to our other energy recovery products. Uh, I'll go through the, the boxes real quickly. Uh, starting with the top left, we've got a tag, a quantity, the model, that doesn't change. The type, this is where you want to click that drop down, and you want to go all the way down to split passive. So once you do that, underneath that type, you'll see that there's a new drop down box that just came up, it's called arrangement. And this covers the arrangements that I just went over on the, on the slides. So you've got the dynamic seasonal offset, that's the DSO, optimized for heating, optimized for cooling, and the level arrangement. So I'm gonna start with the dynamic seasonal offset, and then I'll do another example. All right, so moving, moving over this middle box, we've got some options. Uh, one, a couple of things to point out, the refrigerant, with split passes, we only do 134A, and that has to do with a pressure drop, um, given these large separations that we can be looking at. Our 134A actually performs better uh, with longer uh, separations. Another thing to point out is we can coat these systems. The difference is, if need be, depending on cost or an application, we can either coat supply and exhaust coils, or we can do either either or. So if you have a lab application, you might only be interested in 
coating the exhaust coils, again, to save on, on, on price. So you can just select uh, exhaust coils only. So that's a little bit of a difference compared to the other energy recovery products in Select Plus. All right, for now, I'm just going to do none, just to kind of keep things simple. Moving over to this box here on the right-hand side, we've got a frost control. You can select frost control. What happens there is during winter conditions, uh, Select Plus, as it's doing calculations, it's going to control or modulate performance in the results screen so that your leaving exhaust temperature doesn't drop below 36 degrees. And that's obviously depending on your conditions. Just below that, we have the uh, input for supply and exhaust connecting pipe length. And again, that's one way, that's the linear length. So, you know, I'm just going to throw an arbitrary number, 60 feet of separation. Just below that, it's a little hard to see. And that's something I'm sure will be improving a little bit so it's more um, noticeable. That's the controls. That's where we provide those modulating valves. And some, I don't think I've mentioned this, but those valves can actually be used, obviously, to control performance, but specifically for economizer mode or frost protection. So I'm going to select that, control the HPT providing those uh, modulating valves. And now we get into the inputs. So again, I'm trying to, trying to keep the numbers uh, simple, uh, just so you guys can follow along a little easier. I would definitely recommend going through some selections yourself just to become, just to become a little more familiar, familiarized. So I'm going to do a 10,000 TFM system. And just some winter conditions, I'm doing 10 degrees dry bulb, 10 degrees wet bulb. Down here, the pin height, I'm going to do 16-inch pin height. Again, that's our max pin height per section. If you go anything above that, Select Plus is going to break that down into two sections. So 60 inches fin height, and I'm going to do 60 inch fin length. Six, uh, the rows, we either have two, four, six rows. Those are our options. Now going into the exhaust side, again, 10,000 CFMs. Dry bulb, let me do 70 and 40% RH. All right, so now that we've got those inputs, we're going to calculate. A couple of things to point out here at the uh, result screen. We've got our effectiveness here on the right-hand side. We're looking at 53.3% effectiveness. Uh, we've, we've also got a pressure drop. Here we show the delta T. And we do the same thing for the exhaust side. Uh, one new thing that I wanted to also mention is we've added a new um, option, if you will, where we can actually, HPT can actually provide a moisture eliminator. So depending on your constraints or application, if you don't have enough space to put an extended drain pan, we can provide a moisture eliminator, and, and all you would need is some sort of drip pan that that condensation can be, uh, can be moved out to. So if you want us to provide that moisture eliminator, there's a little option here on the right-hand side. On the right-hand side, it says moisture eliminator, eliminator provided by HPT or provided by others. So one thing is if you select others, meaning you don't need a moisture eliminator or someone else is going to provide it, if you click that, what happens is we actually update the pressure drop. There's a little red prompt. So pointing out the exhaust side, you can see right now it's 0.68 uh, inches pressure drop. If I change this from others to HPT, you're going to see that 0.68 went up to 0.84. And that's because we're, calculate, or we're calculating the pressure drop associated with that moisture eliminator. All right, so those are some of the things I wanted to point out on this screen. I'm going to leave moisture eliminator selected so you can see it in the next screen, which is the drawing screen. All right, so things to look out for here. Uh, the framing, you can't select either galvanized or stainless steel. That hasn't changed. The airflow, so we have supply and exhaust airflow. That is important to select and make sure it's correct because we have those face dampers or partial face dampers on the entering side of the supply and exhaust. We want to make sure that whenever we build these coils that we're attaching the dampers on the right side or on the correct side of, the, of those modules. So the way we denote the, the handing is take a look at the, the supply side here on the system drawing. Hope you guys can see my mouse. 
Uh, if we've got air hitting us in the back of the head, we're looking downstream at the supply side. You can see the headers are located on the right-hand side. So that for us is a right-handed uh, module. So again, you wanna make sure these two are correct. Another thing that's different is with a split passives, I'm sorry, yeah, for HRVs and the HPVs actually, we're providing additional drawings. So here we have a system drawing that shows supply and exhaust. If you go over here to the right-hand side, there's an arrow that'll take you to an individual module drawing. And you can see here, there's a little more detail. We show our dampers, uh, clearances that we need for those dampers. Uh, downstream, over here in the elevation view, we show that moisture eliminator, which is denoted down here. There's also cross-section view, which is denoted by this um, AA cross-section view. And we'll do this drawing for the supply. And if I click over, we'll do this is the drawing for the exhaust. So right now there's no change because we all our dimensions are the same. We have the same options, but we wanted to add additional drawings to provide that extra le level of, uh, of detail. All right, so I think that's it for this option for uh, for this example that I wanted to go through. Again, I know it's a lot of information. I just wanted you guys to get familiar with the layout and things to look out for. So we're going to move on to the next example here. Let's split passive. So I'm going to save and close this. I'm going to add a new line item and get into that. So again, I'm going to change the type, go down to split passive. In this case, I'm going to do a optimize for heating. So what that means is your exhaust coils are going to be lower than your supply coils. So once you select this optimize for heating or cooling, in this case we're doing heating again, you're going to see that there's a new input and that is for the vertical offset. So what you have to uh, input there is a certain percentage of a single um, section thin height. So what I mean by that is if you have a, let's say a, your overall thin height is 60 inches, well, let's say you do a 25% offset. And by the way, 25% is the minimum offset you can, you can do. 25% of that, of that 60 inch thin height is gonna be 15 inches. So you're gonna see in the system drawing screen that we'll get to here in a little bit, it's gonna show a 15 inch offset. So if we change that thin height to go above 75 inches, which is our max we can do per, per section, let's say we do 80 inches. Well, Select Plus is gonna break that 80 inches down into two sections, and each section is gonna be 40 inches. So it's gonna take 25% of those 40 inches. What I'll do here in a little bit is I'll actually run through that example so you can see that difference. But getting back to this top uh, left box, I'm gonna do 25% offset. Uh, again, this middle box, just keep the coding as none. Moving over, let's do 120 feet. That's the max that we can do. And again, I'm gonna select controls. That's, those are the modulating valves that we're providing for those of you who just joined on. And this example, to a slightly larger system, 20,000 CFMs. Again, I'm doing water conditions, just some arbitrary numbers, 10 degrees dry bulb, wet bulb. Uh, the fin height, I'm gonna max that out 75 inches. So you can see that what I was referring to as far as the, the vertical offset. Fin length, sorry, actually, yeah, let me do 75 inches first and then I'll do Fin length of, let's just do 75 again. Six rows, moving over to the exhaust side. 70 drive bulb, oh, sorry about that guys. And 40% RH. So you click, click calculate. Again, these are the results, uh, identical to what we saw with the DSO. Again, we've got the motion limiters that we can, that HPT can provide if need be. I'm going to select others, and I'll take you to the, to the drawing screen, which is really the difference compared to the DSO that we saw before. All right, so up top, we've got the same similar options as before. Airflow in this case is not important for, the, for level arrangements, I'm sorry, for the fixed offset arrangements because there's no dampers, so we don't, we don't need to attach anything on the, 
on the correct side of the uh, of the module. So there's no need to to be accurate with the airflow. So this is one thing I wanted to to mention. To the right of the airflow, it says offset provided by. So we can actually provide this the offset that's actually denoted down here in the system drawing. So if you look at the supply, you see that this offset is 18.775 inches. And again, that's 25% of the 75 inch thin height that we that we selected. And this offset can either be provided by HPT, by us, via sheet metal boxes that the coils can stand on top of, or if it's already there by design, if you have an air handler that's, you know, you have a curb that's already 18 inches or 19 inches or whatever, then you, we don't need to provide you guys with that offset. So you can select others up top, and this node down here, the system drawing, it gets updated. So it says right now, offset base provided by others, installed by others. If we select provided by HPT, the drawing should update, and that note more specifically, it says offset base provided by HPT, installed by others. So again, two, two options, two additional options to look out for as you're in this drawing screen. And again, we have additional drawings here. With this arrow, we've got our supply module and our exhaust module. All right, so one thing I want to do is, as I mentioned before, when we, when we get above that 75 inch max thin height per section, I'm going to go back and reselect. So this 25%, I'm still going to keep it the same, the vertical offset. What I'm going to do down here is go to 80 inches. And do 80 inch offset. I'm sorry, 80 inch fin height. Click calculate. Performance is going to change because we've got lower face velocity now. But what I really want to show you is the system drawing. All right, so now you can see here that Select Plus knows that we're above our max fin height. It's breaking that down to 240-inch sections, and it's taking the offset as 25% of this 40 inches, which is a 10-inch offset in this case. So that's, it's not as intuitive, that whole percent offset. It just takes a little bit of practice, so I recommend going through and working through um, some examples to, you know, again, familiarize yourself with, with that, uh, that input that you have to count for. All right, so I'm going to move along here, getting a little tight on, on, on time here. Uh, now I'm going to get into our wraparounds. I'm just going to go through one example because wraparounds are a little more straightforward because we only have two arrangements. So I'm going to cha change the product type from heat recovery to the wraparound. All right, I'm going to create a new line. and get into the selection. So this hasn't changed to our other wraparound products, which are previously available in Select Plus. Uh, in order to select our vertical tube, what you want to do, again, you want to select Type. You want to go down to Split Passive. And there's, there's nothing that's going to be populated in the arrangement. Really, if you want an, an offset, or level where that's that's actually dictated by the the offset that you input up here in this box. So if you choose, choose to put a zero offset, well, that select plus is going to know that you're doing a level arrangement. So if you add some kind of offset, then it knows you know you're elevating that reheat, whatever uh, however many inches you actually input. So in this case, I'm going to do a 15 inch offset. And that'll make a little more sense as I get down to the to the dimensions. It's actually going to be 25% of my thin height that I'm going to input here. Moving over, again, we have uh, some options, refrigerant, only 134A with these kind of systems. The coating, similar to our energy recovery. We can do electrofin or hair site. And we can coat either the pre-cool and the reheat coils or the pre-cool and or reheat coils, depending on your application or your um, your budget. All right, the right-hand side, up top, we've got uh, really the only difference is controllable option, and that's where we provide those modulating valves that I talked about before. So I'm going to leave that as yes. And just, again, do no for the coding. 
All right, so this fin height, what I'm going to enter in is going to be a 60 inch fin height. So if we do 25% of this 16 inches, or I'm sorry, 60 inches, that's going to be this 15 inch offset that, I'm, that I input up top. So that's going to take a little bit of calculation, actually like manual calculation. It's not something that Select Plus calculates automatically. So 16 inch fin height and 50 inch fin length. Go with four rows. And airflow, again, I'm going to do what I did before with the energy recovery, 10,000 CFM. In this case, I'm going to do, I believe, Tampa design conditions. I'm um, taking 90, 72 dry bulb. And then we're going to input cooling coil leaving temperatures. So I'm going to do 52. And the span, this is, again, this is a span between the prequel reheat. We can do up to 120 feet, which seems a little overkill, but that's there if you need it. Uh, I'm going to do 10 feet in this example, so we'll do 120 inches of span. And once all that looks good, we calculate. And we have some of the, the results here. Again, pointing out that we show the effectiveness. This is for the prequel. We also show the delta T for the prequel. We show the pressure drop. Moving over to the reheat side, again, we're showing the same thing. We're showing the delta T, the pressure drop for the reheat, and the effectiveness. Now, similar to energy to the energy recovery, we again, we do offer moisture eliminators, and the moisture eliminators that we would provide, they would it would be installed on the prequel modules because that's really the only side that you're worried about condensation. So if you want us to provide that, we can. If not, uh, somebody else can provide that. All right, so I'm going to leave that selected, HPT. One thing, oh, sorry, so one thing, if you do select, if you do um, select that others provider or you don't need one, the pressure drop on the prequel is going to update. Right now it's 0.44 inches. If we select a motion eliminator, that goes up to 0.6. All right, so let's continue. Drawing screen here, uh, similar to the energy recovery. We've got select our uh, casing, airflow, not, not as important in this because the piping with these systems is actually done in the field or if you're a manufacturer, you can actually do the piping at your factory. So the coils can actually, they can be flipped uh, if need be. We can provide the offset, as you can see down here on the reheat side, that offset that we're showing is 15, 15 inches, which is what, uh, which was what the input that we had in the, in the first screen. Or if you choose to, somebody else can provide the offset. I would recommend that we provide that offset only because that 15 inches, or the performance basically, is based on those 15 inches. If it turns out somebody provides an offset that is 10 inches, well, you're actually not going to get the same performance that was submitted on which was based on that 15-inch offset. All right, so I'm going to select this HPT providing the offset. And again, we have more drawings available here. We've got the system drawing. We've got a prequel drawing, which we show the motion eliminator. We've got the reheat drawing, and there's no motion eliminator shown on that. And then we've also got a plan view that provides really the whole point of this drawing here, it provides the clearance that you're going to need for the piping. And really that's important if you want to house the piping within your cabinet. If you're going to go outside the cabinet, then it's not as important. But we wanted to make sure that you're aware of what clearance you need if you want to have that piping inside the cabinet. All right, so I think that's as far as the DHPV is concerned. What I want to show you guys now is actually an economic analysis. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to type them into the chat screen or the chat box or the, the questions box, and I'll answer whatever questions you have at the end of this webinar. All right, so we're going to move along. Do you save and close here? So with the economic analysis, let me, let's go back. Let's do the product type, go over to the heat recovery. 
And let's do our, our DSO, which is the, this first line item. Let's get back into the selections. We're going to open up that line item. To do the economic analysis, we're going to click Calculate. And the economic analysis is done in this screen here in your results screen. So over here on the right-hand side, there's a little icon. Click Economic Analysis, and it takes you to this screen. So there's steps here that are indicated in the, um, on the left-hand side in red. So really what you want to do is just go through these steps. There's four of them. So first off, you want to choose the city. So country, state, uh, let's do, I don't know, let's do Illinois. And the city will do Chicago O'Hare. And apply. All right, so now that we set the city, we want to select the runtimes. That can change depending on your application. In this example, I'm just going to leave it 24 7, uh, 12 months out of the year, seven days a week. And if all that looks good, then we're going to go down to step three, which is load bin data. And you can see here on the right hand side, we're taking bin data, which are ASH rate conditions at uh, Chicago O'Hare Airport, and it's populating them. So that's step three. Step four, we want to input the exhaust air temperature. And for energy recovery, we have two options. And this is the same. What I'm going through now is actually the same for all of our energy recovery products that are in Select Plus. So you can use the same uh, procedure that I'm doing now for those other products. So we have two options for exhaust temp. We have either uh, two exhaust temps. That means that depending on if you're in summer or winter, that exhaust temp is going to change. Or we have a process, which is one exhaust temperature, the, your, meaning your exhaust temperature isn't going to change depending on what season you're at. So I'm going to do, let's do two exhaust temperatures, click Submit, and it's going to ask you what temperatures you want to use. So for cooling, let's do 75 30% uh, RH, these are arbitrary values again. For heating, we do 70 and 40% RH. And then you can input a temperature, which is uh, basically at any temperature below that, then Select Plus assumes you're in heating mode, so it's going to use this condition in your exhaust side. All that looks good, click Submit. And you can see here on the right-hand side, that those temperatures are populated, and at a certain point where your outside air gets below 55, it's changing to 70 degrees exhaust temperature. All right, so uh, on the right-hand side, there's two options for economizer and frost control if you want more accurate results. So if all this looks good, what you want to do is you want to, under step four, click Calculate Economic Analysis. And that'll take you to this screen. So left-hand side, those are inputs. You've got your heating types and rates. So electric, I'll leave it at the default of eight cents a kilowatt hour. Uh, the heating type, let's, I'm gonna change that to gas. And we'll do the default at 79 cents, uh, 79 cents a therm for gas. Down here, there's additional inputs. You got your EER, which uh, is used, I think, for the cooling, cooling savings. Got motor efficiencies for your fan. Um, you got burner efficiencies. So these all these inputs here are going to impact your results, which are actually shown here in real time on the right hand side, the green box. Now that we have the gas selected at 79 cents, if you look at your overall savings, that's your net savings. That's basically what you're saving during your during cooling, during heating, and it's subtracting your static cost. So if you click Calculate, you're going to see that 18000 updated to $7,400 or net savings per year. And again, that's based on these inputs on the left-hand side. And if need be, if you want to do a return on investment, you can include an overall cost, and it'll give you a return on investment down here. All right, so that's it as far as economic analysis. Click continue, and a couple of things that I want to kind of wrap up with are the documents uh, that you might want to grab from Select Plus. 
again, if you're interested in submittals, you can do that. If you're interested in just uh, having performance and drawings, individual reports for a line item, you can actually do that as well. So if you want to submittal, what you need to do is over here on the left-hand side of each line item, there's a toggle switch that is for a submittal included. So that means that if you're if the toggle switch is shown as yes, each line, item, each line item is going to be shown in the submittal document. If you say you have 10 selections, you ran a whole bunch of examples, and you only want to output a submittal for three of those, well, you can just toggle the ones that you want off or not, to not include in the submittal to no, and the ones you, that you do want to include in the submittal to yes. So I'm going to select yes for both line items, go to the wraparound. Again, you have that same option for including some middle. I'm just going to click yes. And to actually output us in middle, you want to go up here towards the top, click this little icon. It'll take you to this screen. And you have the option of within us in middle to include design performance, bin analysis, psychometrics, drawings, and cut sheets. The cut sheets we're going to provide are going to be uh, the, the specs and the valves, uh, sequence of operation or control sequence, uh, specs on the boards and whatnot. So what I actually did is sometimes depending on the number of units, this, this can actually take a little bit of time. So in order to save time, I actually already output a PDF that I'm going to show you guys. So these are the, the this is the submittal that we basically just tried to output. So you've got your line items. These are the three that we selected. You've got an example code that um, basically order decoder, if you will. Okay, so that's just an example. You've got a performance results for each selection that we went through. That's the wraparound here. And we've got psychometrics. So everything that we wanted to output, it's shown in this in the middle. We've got our system drawings. That's for the DSO. And that's the individual module drawings. Again, just going through fairly quick. This is a fixed offset. And as you work your way down through this in the middle, which is pr pretty extensive, you're going to see that we start getting into uh, control sequences. These are the, the wiring diagram for our anemone enclosures that we provide in the control boards. So I'm not going to go through everything because there's a lot of a lot of pages here. I just recommend you go through and work through some examples yourself and see what it is uh, that we actually provide in those submittals. All right, so I think that's that's pretty pretty much it for today's webinar. Um, you know, if, again, apologies if it's a little uh, a little quick or maybe a little too much that we wanted to cover. I just wanted to give you a broad range of, of things to look out for. Uh, let me, this time, let me see if anyone has any questions. So, again, if anyone wants to type anything up, send it to me. Feel free to do so in the chat screen.